Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jimmy and with the official public launch of Samsung One UI 6.0 with Android 14 being pushed off starting yesterday, I wanted to cover the top features you're able to find on Samsung One UI 6. Now in yesterday's video, I have a dedicated video that is talking about everything brand new inside of the camera as well as the gallery, just because there is so much there, it needed to have its own dedicated video. This is going to cover everything else that is going along with this huge update. Now, if you're not a part of the beta program and you're getting this update for the first time ever, it'll be sitting right around three gigabytes. Now, if you're already a part of the beta program and you went all the way through beta nine, the update will be around the size of 350 megabytes. So the first feature that I wanna cover in today's video is one that is called auto blocker. And it's a way that it's able to keep your phone safe from getting any type of malicious malware or applications on your phone. So all you have to do is go inside of your settings, scroll down to security and privacy. And then inside of here, you'll scroll down and you'll see this option sitting right there called auto blocker. So it's a way to keep your phone safe by blocking threats and other suspicious activities, such as if you were to plug this into a computer and you're able to find an application, an APK, and if it was unsafe, this is a way that you're able to basically block it. But it does a few additional things as well. So first off, it blocks apps from unauthorized stores. It also turns on app security checks. So it'll do apps installed on your phone will be checked for malicious activity and also blocks commands by USB cable. So malicious chargers, computers, or any other devices won't be able to send commands to your phone when connected using a USB. So if you want to protect your device with any type of malicious activities, if it's an application or something via a cable, all you have to do is just turn on the auto blocker. Now feature number two, this is a way that you're able to fully customize your clock face on the lock screen. So originally when you went inside of your lock screen settings, and let's say you wanted to tap and edit your lock screen, all you were able to do is choose which clock to have in its place. You weren't really able to fully customize everything such as the location, the size. And so if now what you're able to do is you can make it smaller, you can make it bigger, you can rotate it anywhere you would like it to be, make it as big or as small as you want it, make all of everything a different boldness or a different way of a, of a different type of font. So yeah, this is pretty nice because originally, if you chose one, it would be exactly where it's supposed to be without any changes. And this is where you're actually able to just do everything fully customized to your needs and wants. Feature number three is one that's definitely beloved because it's something that is giving you a new user interface when it comes down to listening to music. So this right here is called Expanded Music Player Widget or just the Expanded Player. So originally, it, it could show like this and during the beta program versus either beta one, two or three, it was always showing up here and not going to this one right here automatically. So that means that anytime that you went to your lock screen or anywhere else, even if you went inside of your device control, sometimes it was kind of a collapsed view, but they're able to fully fix it. And however you have it set up as its last view is how it's going to show up. Meaning if you have it being collapsed, the next time that you take a look at it, it will also be collapsed. And then if you were to expand it so you can view everything, it's going to look just like this everywhere. Not only the lock screen, not only on your notifications page right here, but also even if you go inside of your media output and if you're changing and figuring out where you want it to play from, either your phone or a different Bluetooth speaker or a car or a headset, it's gonna be expanded here as well. So the user interface of Expanded Music Player is literally placed everywhere and it'll always stay expanded as long as that is where it was in its last use. Feature number four is a way that you're able to notice every single permission ever being used on your phone and when it was being used for which application. And what I mean by permission is basically the microphone, the camera, your location, whatever. So all you'd have to do is when you go inside of your settings, you wanna go inside of your security and privacy. Inside of security and privacy, when you scroll down, you're gonna see this little area here that is called permissions used in the last 24 hours. And it basically breaks it down on what applications is using what. So if you're noticing a few things that are looking a little fishy, you're able to take a look at it or turn off those permissions. So you can just take a look right here. Here's the expanded view. Anytime that you have nearby devices, it's letting you know which applications is using nearby devices. So this way, if you're gonna Bluetooth something to them, or if it's having a Bluetooth low energy connection with it, such as a watch or a headset, here's your locations. Obviously, Facebook is using location, Pokemon Go, Monster Hunter Now, 
contacts is using uh, you know these applications here physical activity it's you know recognizing my walking calendar a couple applications looking at calendar so you're able to go through and take a look at what permissions is being you know used per every single one and if you ever want to take a look at it you can just tap on any of them individually and then you can turn off specific permissions such as camera microphone or location per whichever app you would like to turn it off for. Feature number five, we'll take a look inside of device care because there's quite a few things that has changed, updated, moved, or added inside of here. So the first thing we'll take a look at inside of device care will be this one right here called performance profile. This is a way that you're able to set up your phone on what you want it to do between balancing its own little life, between the processing speed, the battery life, the cooling efficiency. So that is for standard. I have mine set up as light, so I can have a better battery life overall because it prioritizes battery life and cooling efficiency over processing speed. Now this phone is really only used for watching YouTube and taking a look at Twitter or Instagram or playing Monster Hunter Now or Pokemon Go. So nothing too crazy going on. So I would rather have a better battery life on my device rather than keeping it as standard because this one, for me at least, is the best option. Now going back one page, right below that one is one that is called auto optimization. Now originally, you were always able to put in a day and a time for your phone to restart. Then they basically made it to where it was doing it automatically, and then they went back into adding in when you can actually do the auto restart. So you can choose which day, what time, how many days a week, you do it once a week, twice a week, whenever you would like to. And it's just basically restarting your phone. It's cleaning its memory. It's just getting it to a fresh start. A lot of times people just keep their phones on all the time. They charge it up, they use it, they charge it up, they use it, they never restart it, they never turn it off. And it's really just making your phone bog down and slow down. Just like everybody, every human being has to go to bed at night. So it's a good thing for your technology to do the same thing. So restart this thing at least once or twice a week and you'll see it running even more smoothly. Smooth. So this is where you can go inside of auto optimization to have it turned on. It'll tell you when the last auto restart happened. Uh, last auto memory cleaning was 14 hours ago. And then you can just have the auto restart and you can set whatever schedule you would like on the very bottom. Now, again, let's go back one page and then we're going to take a look at storage. So storage, they had a few updates here as well. One of the nice things that you're able to see down here is going to be trash. So files sitting in the trash in various applications. So if you remember, there was a trash that was for gallery. There was also trash that was for my files. And now they're actually all just sitting in one place. You can also take a look at any of your unused applications. So if there's any application you have not used in 30 days, it's letting you know how much space you can save just by getting rid of them. If you have any duplicate files that are sitting here, any of your large files, anything that's pretty big, if you're trying to clear up some space, this is a way that you're able to find the large ones right away. And then right here, you're going to have a bunch of different suggestions of what you're able to do and what it thinks you should do with your phone to keep everything going you know, fairly smooth when it comes down into managing your storage and data. Feature number six is one I love to use anytime and every time I get a phone call from a phone number that I don't recognize. I go inside of my phone application first and I head inside of my settings and then I go inside of Bixby text call. Bixby text call is a way that you're able to have something automated, basically answering the call for you, asking questions. It's letting them know that I am using a service to see why they are calling. And then as they speak, you can read exactly what they are saying. And then either you can answer the phone call or reject it, or you can respond back through text and it'll read back to them. Now, the fun thing is that you can actually return back into Bixby text call during the phone call, which is something that you're not able to do on any other screening services or anything out there, especially with the Google Pixel device, they have the Google screening or screen call option, but you can't go back to it after you answer a phone call. With the, Bixby, with the Bixby text call, you can. You can take a look at some of the quick responses and you can even change the voice or the language. So there's several different options you can choose from for when they are listening to this speech service. And if you want it to be a guy, a girl, or if you want an accent or whatever, you have a few different options. It's just a really fun way that if you, again, don't know who is calling, you just choose the option Bixby text call. It will start answering it for you. You see who it's about. And if it's important, then you can pick it up. Feature number seven is one that's very helpful, especially when it comes down to traveling. And that is the smart airplane mode. So what happens normally when you turn on airplane mode is that your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth turns off. Now, once I turn on this airplane mode, let's say every time, no matter what, every time I turn on airplane mode, I'm still going to be using my Bluetooth. So all you got to do is turn it on after you turn on an airplane mode. 
And then what's really nice about it is that let's say that you're in the airplane, you arrived, you turned off your airplane mode, and let's say that you know you can see everything popping right back up. So my Wi-Fi is back up, my Bluetooth is still there. And let's just say it's maybe a layover, or maybe you're going back on an airplane ride maybe two or three days later or a week later. The next time you go inside the airplane mode, Bluetooth will stay on. So it is a smart airplane mode remembering your last input. So if I was to have both of these turned on right now, the next time I go inside airplane mode, these two will stay on. But if you want to go back into its normal setting, all you have to do is have these things turned off. And so then now when you turn off the airplane mode, the next time you go back into airplane mode, it's going to stick with these settings. Feature number eight is one that's very, very diverse. It's a way that you're able to move anything and everything from one location to another location, either with two hands or two fingers. So one of the first examples that I'll show you is let's say that you press and hold on an application and you want to move it to another screen. So originally you would have to move this finger to move it to another screen. All you have to do now is you can actually have two finger input and move it anywhere you want it to go. Another way that you can do this is let's say you go inside of gallery and let's say that you wanted to take maybe this image sitting right here. Uh, as it's floating, you can move it into another album. You can swipe up with the other finger, open up another application, put it into somewhere else, give it a little drop and you can put it there. And then another way you can do this, let's say you go inside of the gallery. Let's say that we do a little press and hold. Once it's kind of floating, you can swipe up and then you go inside of, let's say tools and go inside of keep notes. You can hit the play button or a little plus button to add a new note. And then now that image is going to sit right inside of this application. So really you can move it anywhere and everywhere you want to. You can go inside of my files and inside of my files, this is where you can move something from one little area to another little area. Feature number nine is one that's definitely helpful if you share your mobile hotspot with anybody. It could be a family member, a neighbor, a stranger at an airport. So if you turn on your mobile hotspot and if somebody is asking for a little bit of help or a little bit of better connectivity, maybe they're trying to do schoolwork or office work or just get a hold of somebody. Basically, if you have your mobile hotspot turned on, you now have this option on the bottom that is called one time password. So this is super helpful if you only want them to use it the one time. So all they have to do is basically uh, put in this little code. You can either copy and paste it to them or they can see it right there. You give them your password and then now they're only able to use it the one time because if you turn this one off and then you turn it right back on, what's going to happen is that it could change. If not, you can just hit right here, reset password. So if you don't want them to keep using your network, maybe they are using it beyond the time limit that you thought they needed to use it or they're using it too much data, reset the password or turn it off. And it's a way to have that one time password be taken away. But again, you're giving them access to your mobile hotspot without actually having your real password to the hotspot itself, which mine's just one through eight. That's just for demonstration purposes for this video, but it's a very helpful feature if you only want someone to use it the one time. Feature number 10 and the last feature we'll talk about in today's video is a updated version of Samsung Smart Select. So Smart Select allows you to select an area of the screen that you're able to either save or download, copy, paste, extract text, whatever. But this is definitely helpful because it now actually has this little magnifying glass that you're able to see exactly where that little fat finger is sitting at. Because right now, I don't know if I'm on the lens, if I'm on the left or the right. And if this is something that I want to get as an image, I'm now able to see exactly where that little finger is sitting. Now, along with that, you will be able to see different ratios on what you are currently clipping. So this is a 16 by 9. If I was to move it over, this is like a 5 by 3, 16 by 9. So if there's a particular, here's a four by five, if, if there's a particular ratio you're looking for that you need to basically grab and capture, you can now see exactly which ratio you are then sitting at. And then the second thing that they added in with this little edge panel is going to be the pin to screen. So this right here, they updated it to where not only can you change the size of it, but you're also able to extract the text from it after the fact you create it. So once you do this little pin thing, it's gonna pin it to your window. You're able to access it when you know anytime you want to. So maybe there's numbers here, you need to open up your calculator or a calendar, maybe there's dates. You can also resize this thing if you want to so it doesn't take up too much space. If you tap on this one, you can either download the image, make it smaller, or you can just get rid of it completely. And you can also even extract the text from it. And this is something that you weren't able to do beforehand because uh, originally you would have to extract the text before you pinned it to your screen. And now you can extract the text after the fact, which is very, very cool. So that's everything that I wanted to cover in today's video. That is the top 10 brand new features as a part of Samsung One UI 6.0 with Android 14. 
outside of the gallery and camera because gallery and camera has so many things that it had to have its own dedicated video. Yes, there's a couple other things I could have covered as well, such as the updated emojis, but I wanted to cover the top 10. That one just didn't make the cut. So hopefully you guys appreciated this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe on the very bottom left hand side. And if you like this video, then more than likely you'll also like this video. And I'll see you guys later.